Alright, let's talk about diverticulosis and diverticulitis. So diverticulosis, is, the difference here you can see is osis and itis. Itis refers to inflammation. So what's diverticulosis? So this is a picture of a large intestine. And as you can see, there was a weak spot here in the bowel. And high pressures have caused part of this to cause an, a, a ballooning outside. So part of the um, exterior wall of the colon is loose or weak. And so it's almost like a herniation, a hernia of the large intestine. So patients uh, that have diverticulosis, this can be caused by low fiber diets. And the reason being is they're not having good bowel movements, then it's not moving through, and so there's lots of buildup, lots of pressure, and so that will push on those weak spots and cause the herniations. And so uh, diverticulitis is when this herniation gets a clot here, such as through the seeds or nuts or some other source, and the stool that's in here gets infected, and what happens is it, it, it just starts getting inflamed and swollen and growing and causing lots of pain. So, signs and symptoms of diverticulosis, there may be none. And only about 10% of patients with diverticulosis end up devo uh, developing diverticulitis. Um, so if you, have, if you find that you have diverticulosis because you're in the hospital for some other reason, you find out, avoid seeds and nuts so that it doesn't cause a uh, uh, obstruction which could lead to diverticulitis. So signs and symptoms once it develops the diverticulitis, now it's inflamed and swollen. What's that going to cause? It's going to cause lots of pain. And it says here, left lower quadrant pain. The reason being is the large intestine starts off large and it gets smaller as it leads towards the anus. And so this narrowing, this funneling, uh, what happens is pressures increase as it comes towards the end of the large intestine, so which would be the left side. So see how it narrows. So more chances than not, the high pressures, which are higher here, because they're narrowing, this is where you're going to develop the diverticulosis. And then, since that's where you have the diverticulosis, that's where you have the diverticulitis that will become inf inflamed. Uh, because you have inflammation, you'll have fever. And you may have occult bleeding uh, because all of the inflammation and the damaging to the walls here could cause uh, some blood vessels to rupture and cause some bleeding uh, in the diverticulum. So treatment for diverticulitis. Uh, at this point, uh, you, the patient's going to be NPO, and the reason being is you don't want a bunch of stuff moving through the large intestine that's going to be causing increased pressures uh, and, and putting more pressure on that inflamed bowel. And uh, you may also see NG tubes inserted, and they'll be on suction to get everything out of the stomach. That way, you don't have a bunch of spit and acid and other things going through the large intestine that's trying to be absorbed and causing, you know, you give them bowel rest, okay? Since you're not able to eat or drink, you want to give them IV fluids, keep them hydrated. Uh, you want to give them antibiotics to help fight the infection. That will be IV. And you want to give them some pain medications. Um, and this, and you're, what you're going to do is you're going to be like this for a while until they start getting better, until the bowel movements start getting better. Then you can advance them from NPO to a clear liquid diet when the doctor says so. So, and then after discharge, this is where we're going to talk about the diet. So, I talked about NPO at first for bowel rest. Once they start getting better, better clear liquid diet, then the diet you want to have after that is going to be low fiber. Why do I say low fiber? Because you don't want a bunch of abrasive material passing through here on this inflamed diverticulitis. Okay. Then once everything's back to normal, go ahead and do the high fiber diet to prevent any future diverticulum to develop. And you definitely want to say no nuts and no seeds because you don't want any of the diverticulum to clot off. Okay, if that doesn't work, they may need surgery if it's severe enough, in which case they'll either cut out the section of the uh, colon that is bad and just reconnect here, that's called a bowel resection, or if it's severe enough and it's the entire bowel, they may take the whole bowel out with a colectomy, in which case they'll put an ostomy in, which is an artificial uh, colon that typically protrudes out of the patient's abdomen and they stool into a bag. So. Diverticulosis is just the uh, herniation. Diverticulitis is when that herniation becomes inflamed. So that is what we have to talk about today.